Hi Aquaria and Agnama Lita and this is my channel The Midnight Librarian and today I will be talking about my fall book haul. So it is still technically the beginning of November. Actually it's more towards the mid. This month is flying by. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Anyway, today I will be talking about my fall book haul. I did one similar for summer um, where I talked about all the books that I was able to get into my position from May, June, no, June, July, and August. And this time I will be talking about the books I was able to get into my position for uh, September, October, and November. So even though there's still a couple more weeks left of November, I figured I might as well do this now because if you can see them behind me, I've accumulated quite a lot. So I'm not gonna do these in any particular order. I'm just kinda grabbing them off the shelf and in whichever way they won't fall over. The first one I'm pretty excited about, I recently got this in one of Alcrate's special edition boxes and I hope to read it. I hope to read it next month. The special edition, special Alcrate edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This is by V.E. Schwab. This is a beautiful embossed um, naked hardcover with a ribbon attached ribbon bookmark. It also came with some photo challenges and um, playlists. So this is B.E. Schwab's newest release. I believe she has a new one coming out too for the Cassidy Blake series. Um, but this one I was pretty excited for. I think this is like an adult novel. Basically Addie had sold her soul to be able to live forever. However, the drawback is that anyone she meets won't remember her. But then after living for like, I think 300 years, she goes into a shop and meets a boy that remembers her. I absolutely adore the foil embossment of rose gold. Rose gold is the best and everything in that box was amazing. I should have done an unboxing, but I was way too eager <laughs> to dig into that box. So yeah, you're not getting that. The next book I just recently got, and I want to thank Neil from our Neil Yazi uh, for gifting this to me. Thank you so much, Neil. He is an absolute gem and literary wizard. I think we've is what we've dubbed him in the Indigenous Book Reviewers group. Very much appreciate it, Neil. I'll have any one that has gifted me something link down in the description below. Definitely check them out. Neil gave me love after. The End. This is an anthology of Two-Spirit and Indigenous Queer Speculative Fiction edited by Joshua Whitehead, the author of Johnny Appleseed that I read earlier this year. Um, and this is, I believe, their new release. It came out pretty recently. And I've been wanting to get my hands on it. Another book I get to add to my Indigenous bookshelf. I'm so excited. The next two books I actually got for my book of the month subscription. I recently did um, renew my subscription to this. This one, which is a favorite of um, someone I trust, and that is Betty, a novel by Tiffany McDaniel. This is another indigenous um, author, I believe. So it follows like a mixed family of uh, white and Cherokee. I, like I said, don't know much going into these, um, but this one in particular, I just kind of bought on the whim because I've heard such good things from um, Alexis from Little Book Lion. Little Alexis Lion? Uh, yeah. So I know that she was really particularly happy with this book, so I was really excited to get it. Also, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> if you're new here, hi. Uh, I tend to not know what a lot of the summaries of these books are once I buy them. Um, I make sure that it's something I'm interested in before purchasing, but once purchased it goes out the window and I'm perfectly happy with that because then I can kind of go into the books um, without spoiling myself. So yeah, just a heads up. This next one I kind of got because I was looking for more of a family, um, a family dynamic, a generational book of sorts, and from what I saw in the synopsis, this is what this is. And that is The Starcross Sisters of Tuscany, a novel by Laurie Nelson Spielman. 
I uh, have not heard of this author before. And like I said, don't know too much about it. I thought the cover was gorgeous and it was kind of a whim pick because ultimately I just wanted to pick something to be able to get Betty. This next book is also a relatively new release um, that I found at my local bookstore and that is The Dark Archives, a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books bound in human skin by Megan Rosenblum. This was actually a suggestion on the My Favorite Murder podcast. I believe Georgia is friends with Megan Rosenblum or knows of her and had suggested this book because they had actually done a epi an episode on something of the sort. But I'm really it really intrigued me and I was really surprised to see it in my local bookstore so I picked it up um and figured it'd be a very interesting uh morbid nonfiction read. These next couple books are going to be graphic novels that I picked up that I either want to continue and like I have the series and just want to continue or I picked up a couple new series um because they sound really interesting. So the first two I've actually have started the series and want to continue it. And the first one is Teen Titans Beast Boy by Cami Garcia, illustrated by Gabriela Piccolo. Um, I have Raven. I loved Raven. I was super excited for Beast Boy because Beast Boy's powers are something that I've always wanted myself. If you ever answer that question of what's a superpower that you want, I would definitely pick changing into an animal. The next two I'm super excited for. The art looks amazing and the concepts sound really weird and up my alley. And that the first one being Kim Reaper, Grim Beginnings by Sarah Grayley. Um, don't know what this is about. I actually just saw the art and I was like, okay. Yep, sold. Like most university students, Kim works a part-time job to make ends meet. Unlike university, most university students, Kim's job is pretty cool. She's a grim reaper, tasked with guiding souls into the afterlife. Like most university students, Becca has a super intense crush. Unlike most university students, Becca's crush is on a beautiful gothic angel who frequents the underworld. Of course, she doesn't know that. Unaware of the ghoulish drama she's about to step into, Becca finally gathers up the courage to ask Kim on a date. But when she falls into a ghostly portal and interrupts Kim, Kim at her job, she sets off a chain of events that will pit the two of them against angry cat dads, vengeful zombies, and perhaps even the underworld itself. But if they work together, they just might make it. And maybe even get a smooch in the bargain. This sounds absolutely adorable. I'm super excited. So this is a like gothic, cute, sapphic graphic novel. Super excited about this. This looks so cute. Uh, again, this next one, I just saw the art, saw the title and was like, I need to have it. And that is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Look at that cover. I absolutely love it. Um, this one, Lunella Lafayette is an inhuman preteen genius who wants to change the world. That job would be a lot easier if she weren't living in a mortal fear of her latent inhuman gene. There's no telling what she'll turn into, but Luna's got a plan. All she needs is an omni-wave projector. Easy, right? That is until a red-scaled beast is teleported from the prehistoric past to a far-flung future we call today. Together, they're the most marvelous team-up of all, the inhuman moon girl and time-tossed devil dinosaur. But with, but will they be BFFs forever or until devil dinosaur is dinner time? And Lunella soon learns that there is other problems with having a tight, Panic T Rex as a pet in the modern day Marvel universe. School for one, monster hunters are another, especially when they're the totally awesome Hulk. Then there's the fact that everyone's favorite dino didn't journey through time alone. Beware the prehistoric savages known as the killer folk, the New York City's deadliest tourists. Can Lunella handle all this turmoil and keep herself from transforming into an inhuman monster? What? <laughs> yes. The next one I actually kind of hesitated because I heard there was a change in artistry, which I was kind of nervous about, and that was Rat Queens. Um, 
I think that's by a slew of different people, but ultimately um, the first, this is volume four, the first three um, have a slightly different art style because it was a different artist. However, that artist got into some trouble, I believe. Uh, he was accused of domestic violence, and so um, the author of the graphic novel series uh, let him go as the artist and picked someone else up, which, good on them. I'm glad they were able to do that. However, it does kind of change the story a bit. So, um, but I'm, it was still a fantastic series for the first three, and I'm sure that um, I'm really hoping I enjoy it going into... Uh, the fourth volume. These next four books I purchased through um, bookshop.org. I'm trying to switch over from Amazon to bookshop.org. Um, I encourage everyone to do the same. I'll leave uh, my link for bookshop.org down in the description down below. I do have an affiliate link as multiple indigenous book reviewers do as well, so I'll leave those down below. I know it's a really privileged an easy thing for me to be able to say switch to this instead of Amazon as Amazon has more is more accessible throughout the world unfortunately bookshop.org is just available through in the US so bear that in mind um, if you have the opportunity and means to do so I highly encourage it but otherwise you gotta do what you gotta do first one for that is Gather the Daughters by Jean Melamed, 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 I have no idea, I'm sorry. Um, but this one, I believe, is a futuristic book about a radical society of ancestor worship, um, people who ended up colonizing a, an island. And now, and this gives me very much um, the Grace Year vibes. Uh, so I'm interested to see where it goes. Also, that cover trips me out. Uh, this one, it's Gorgeous Parnassi by Susanna Clark. This is um, blurbed to be anyone who enjoyed. Um, Madeline Miller's work and Neil Gaiman's work and I think even Erin Morgenstern blurbed it so uh, yes <laughs> um, but I believe this has to do with Parnassi who lives in a whose house is like a labyrinth like he has oceans and rooms um, and like just a lot it's huge he knows of one other person that lives in the house with him but they're starting to find evidence that um, there's someone else living in there with them. So, curious how this works. I love, love, love that cover. This gorgeous book is War Girls by Tochi Onibuchi. This is an Afrofuturism book set in, I believe, 2172. Um, Climate change and nuclear disasters have made the world unlivable. Uh, There's like a civil war breaking out between Nigerians and Biafrans over mineral rich land. Uh, that's all I really want to know. This looks badass. This one is a relatively new release and that is Horrid by Katrina Leno. I believe this was described as like a haunted house story, gothic story. That's all I really know. This cover is gorgeous. I was hoping to be able to put this in for my October uh, read, but of course that didn't end up happening. I do hope to sprinkle in some horror throughout my year uh, rather than leave it in for just October. I mean, enjoy morbidity throughout the year. Why not? These next three I was gifted by Lanternfish Press, so thank you so much to them for sending me these um, I believe they're advanced reader copies. No, they all look like finished paperback copies. Oh wait, no, that one is. I have one finished paperback and two advanced reader copies, so thank you so much to Lanternfish Press. Um, the first one is Daughters of the Air by Anka L. I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. 
Zilagi. Zilagi. I believe this is like speculative fiction. We follow Tatiana, who is mostly happy and awkward young girl, but when her sociologist father ends up disappearing in Argentina's war, her mom sends her New York City to attend a boarding school. She ends up running away and is trying to find her wings, both figuratively and literally. The next one is an advanced reader's copy and it was out October 13th, so it should be out now, and that is The Elegy of the Undead by Matthew Vesley. I believe this follows Jude and Lyle. Um, they are newlyweds. Lyle has been infected with a disease and transforms into a zombie. There is no cure. Jude tries to make Lyle comfortable while they spend the rest of the remaining time he has before he loses himself completely. This sounds really devastating and creepy. The Anonymous Tale is another advanced reader's copy. This one was out May 5th, 2020. Um, so it is available and it's being the confessions of an unwilling pirate marooned for a time upon the shores of New Madagascar. I believe this follows a surgeon who ends up going on board a British Empire ship, but um, there becomes a mutiny and he's forced to become a pirate. These next two were gifted to me from Min. Min is also an indigenous book reviewer. Uh, she's indigenous of Australia and these were gifted from her. I am so happy to receive them. Again, indigenous authors from Australia. I love it. I want to be able to read more um, indigenous works all over the world. That would be fantastic. And Min was so so gracious to send these to me. I will leave Min down in and her links down in the description down below, as well as her book club, the Blackfella Book Club, book club, based in Australia. So super stoked about these. And of course, these are gorgeous. <laughs> the first being The Swan Book by Alexis Wright. This one I believe follows a mute woman called Oblivia. She is the victim of gang rape and from a displaced community. She is married to the first aboriginal president of Australia. It's set in the future. <laughs> it focuses on the realities of ab aboriginal people. Hmm. And then there is Song of the Crocodile. This cover is gorgeous. Um, but this one follows an aboriginal family who live in a community with settler families. Um, there is a quiet racism that no one is really talking about. However, something happens that brings out all those unspoken racisms and they have to figure out what's going on. So this book I've already read, I've already talked about, there's a review posted on my page or on my channel, so go ahead and check that out. But that is for A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger. This is, uh, like I've said in my review, I've called it, this is like gonna be my favorite book of 2020. And yeah, pick this up if you have not. This is a gorgeous book, gorgeous cover. This is the final copy. I ended up forwarding my um, advanced reader's copy to another indigenous book reviewer. So I am so happy to have gotten this finished copy. So it lost the way it was illustrated by Ravina Kai. Ravina Kai's work is gorgeous and I was obsessed to the point where I got a couple more books that uh, Ravina has illustrated. Um, and The Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness. Uh, I've been wanting this for a while, but then after realizing that Ravina Kai illustrated uh, the cover, I definitely got it sooner. And then the latest one that came out with Ravina Kai's work is actually smaller than I expected it to be, but it's still gorgeous. And that's The Fourth Island by Sarah Tom Tolmy. Yes. In the Sea Off the Coast of Ireland is a fourth island. Aran Island, a secret island peopled by the lost, findable only in monuments of despair. Whether drowned at sea, trampled by Cromwell soldiers, or exiled for clinging to the dead, no outsiders reach the island without giving into the dark emotion. 
time and again the fourth island weaves a hypnotic pattern with its prose presaging doom before walking back through the sweet and thorough moments of lives not yet lost it beautifully metal melds the certainty of loss with the joys of living drawing readers under like the tide super excited for that um i believe i did like i said i read this before i actually bought it uh <laughs> read the synopsis before i bought it but rereading it is just like reading it for the first time it's fantastic uh this work is probably my favorite of ravina's i wish it was available for print because i would love this framed these next two are going to be my last advanced reader copies for this round of my haul. Um, the first one is from Harper Collins, and that is The Lowering Days by Gregory Brown. This is an indigenous book, I believe, indigenous author. I believe, I can't necessarily tell, but it's a promising literary star makes his debut with this emotionally powerful saga set in 1980s Maine that explores family love, the power of myths and storytelling, survival and environmental exploitation, and the ties between cultural identity and the land we live on. So this one comes out uh, March of next year in 2021. So I'm hoping to get to that here within the next couple of months. And this next advanced readers copy was given to me by Dance Books. Thank you both HarperCollins and Dance 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 Books. Um, and this is As You Were by David Tremblay. I believe this is a memoir. Um, because David Tremblay served in U.S. Armed Forces. And this kind of talks about when his uh, he learns when his father is dying, he ponders what will become of the mon monster's legacy and picks up a pen and starts to write the story. He recounts his childhood, bouncing between his father who wrestles with anger, alcoholism, and a traumatic brain injury, his grandmother who survived Indian boarding schools but mistook the corporal punishment she endured for proper child rearing. So this one should be fairly intense I feel like um and this one doesn't come out until February of 2021 so this is going to be on my to be red pile for January these next two books I'm borrowing <laughs> borrowing from my niece I we so my niece used to live with us yeah my niece used to live with us so we still um her room's kind of been is more like a storage room now but we still have a bookshelf in there for her for her books and I recently went in there and saw these two and was like ah, I'm borrowing these and I'll give them back when I'm done um but they're both by Louise Erdrich and that and both signed which I didn't know um but it is <laughs> I can't read them once I get more to them because I'm reading them now and it's book four and book two of the Birch Bark House series. So I'll have to get more of that series to be able to read these two. Um, but that is The Porky Pioneer and Chickadee. Maybe I'll just expand on my niece's collection and read them first and then kind of encourage, lightly encourage her to read them. The next book I got was through another one through bookshop.org. However, this one was through someone else's um, affiliate link. They had a list of books to read other than American Dirt. Um, so that's what I was seeking out in Coyote Songs by Gabino Iglesias uh, came up. And this one is Iglesias' second novel and has ghosts and old gods guide the hands of those caught up in the violent struggle to save the soul of the American Southwest. A man tasked with shuttling children over the border believes the Virgin Mary is guiding him towards final justice. A woman offers colonizer blood to the mother of chaos. A boy joins corpse destroyers to seek vengeance for the death of his father. These stories intertwine with those of a vengeful spirit and a hungry creature to paint a timely, compelling, pulpy portrait of revenge, family, and hope. 
This one is one I've been looking at for a bit because I love that bright pink color. I also love that illustration. This is Little Feast Stories by Jules Archer. This is a collection of, of flash fiction. So these are stories are a table long buffet of femininity, a lying tree, childhood innocence, toxic masculinity, and a 20 pound cast iron skillet. The next book I actually received from my mother. So that was really nice. Um, she's definitely trying to uh, grow my indigenous bookshelf and this one is actually a local book um, and it is Salmon and Acorns Feed Our People, A Colon Colonialism, Nature and Social Action by Carrie Marie Norgard. And I believe, yeah, Carrie Marie Norgard is a non-native professor of sociology and environmental studies at the University of Oregon. She has engaged in environmental justice policy work with the Karuk tribe since 2003. So I believe this book um, was in coordination with um, the Karuk tribe. So I'm eager, so it's not indigenous uh, authored, but it's still going to be interesting and I Another one I really enjoy the cover of. And then the last two I got from Costco because I have no impulse control at Costco. Um, and that is The Silent Wife by Karen Slaughter. This will be my first Karen Slaughter book. I have not read anything else by her. Why did I pick this up? Oh, because it was by a serial, serial killer and I was really interested in getting stuff with serial killers in it. <laughs> After because uh, I was still on a serial killer binge so that'll be interesting and finally I have finally gotten The Hate You Get by Angie Thomas um, I've been wanting to read this and I'm pretty particular in my audiobooks that was available through my library um, and I feel like this one I would just understand I would just appreciate better if I read it physically. So that is my fall book haul. If you have read any of these, let me know what your thoughts are. Please no spoilers. I have introduced a book that you haven't heard before and you lo looked interesting. Please let me know. If you want to chat on any other platform, please add me. <laughs> Follow me. I'm on Instagram. <laughs> Goodreads and Twitter. More active on Instagram than anything else. I will leave uh, links down below for anyone that I have mentioned as well as for Indigathon as it's still November, the readathon's still happening, social injustices are still happening. Please do your research, share, post, and donate where you can just because and please 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 just because you voted does not mean the pandemic is over. Please continue wearing your masks and staying six feet apart, staying home, washing your hands, particularly as we enter winter season and flu season's coming. So yeah, let's, let's keep, keep our distance and keep clean everyone. Otherwise, I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading and I will talk to you again here soon. Chew.